Dak Prescott of the Cowboys went down with what's certainly the worst injury we've seen this NFL season and is already on his way for surgery to his right ankle. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. In this video, we're gonna walk through what happened here tonight with this just horrific injury for Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. We'll take a look at the footage to understand how something like this happened, talk about the relevant anatomy, and then specifically what the medical team is gonna do on field to ensure Dak's safety as best as possible. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, Sports, then please consider subscribing to my channel and be sure and go follow me over on Twitter for more real-time breakdowns and analysis. Dak's already on his way for ankle surgery tonight and the concern here is for an ankle dislocation that is most often associated with a fracture and could be an open fracture as well. So as Dak is running out to the side here to try and get away from this tackle, you can see actually right here as he plants with that right foot, you can already see it looks like this is kind of when the initial onset of the sequence of events leading to his injury first occurred. As he's planting here, you can already tell how much his foot is starting to externally rotate and the inside of his ankle or his medial malleolus is already starting to fall inward leading to this dislocation. Now, of course, if we continue the clip here, everything's fine, but honestly, I think at this point, even though his foot's up in the air, he's probably already started that sequence of events with the injury that's gonna be even worse when he, of course, lands. So then when he comes down, the position is just exacerbated even more. He lands, and again, right as he lands before the defender even makes contact, you can already see how his ankle is starting to collapse inward here, leading to the events of this injury. Of course, then if we continue this play along, of course, this moment, you can see now his ankle has completely dislocated here. His foot is severely externally rotated, meaning his, point, his toes are pointed outwards, and then if we continue the clip here, we can of course see how bad this was when Dak came up and actually saw it. This portion of the ankle kind of sticking out here is likely his medial malleolus. It's that inside heel bone that we'll talk about more in a little bit. Now we can't tell just from looking at this if it's an open fracture. An open fracture is when the bone actually comes through the skin, which is gonna be of course a much more serious situation. Almost every single time you have an ankle joint dislocation, you also have a fracture. And we of course have heard that Dak is already on his way for surgery to try and repair this injury. If we go and look at our anatomy model here, this is an example of a right foot, just like Dak's injury. Injury. The inside of the ankle is this bump right here. That's the medial malleolus, and it's a part of your tibia or your shin bone. On the outside is where you have the fibula or the lateral kind of malleolus. The actual joint that gets dislocated most of the time with an ankle dislocation is the joint between the tibia and the shin bone and the talus. It's the tibio talar joint. If we take a look at it on this model, of course, again, a right foot, this is gonna be the outside of the foot. This is gonna be the inside portion of the foot. And this bump here on the inside is gonna be that medial malleolus. What happened here with Dak, if we go back to this clip of when it happened, this position right here, where you see his ankle kind of collapse into this externally rotated position, basically what's going on is he's planting his foot and then the ankle is externally rotating outward and then just collapsing inward. And this is kind of attached together so I can't dislocate it, thankfully. But what you basically have when this happens, that talus is sort of like my fist. And then the tibia and the fibula kind of come around on top of the talus. And so you have motion for the toes to point up and point down, but you don't have as much motion for the toes to point in and point out. But if you excessively externally rotate where you point the toes out far enough, you spread apart that tibia and fibula to the point where now you allow that ankle to dislocate, and often when it dislocates, you get the concomitant fracture. This is actually the same mechanism as when somebody has a high ankle sprain, because in a high ankle sprain, the ligament that's involved is this guy right here that attaches the fibula to the tibia. It's the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. And again, the reason that gets stretched is because whenever that talus rotates, you push apart the tibia and the fibula. So you're pushing these two bones apart, which stresses these ligaments and start to fail. And then of course, as the ankle itself dislocates, then you're gonna have tearing of these medial deltoid ankle ligaments and sometimes even tearing of these lateral ones, just depending on how bad the dislocation and injuries are. The key point of an injury like this on the field, if I'm covering a game, is to first off look at the neurovascular structures within the ankle that could be injured and trying to get that ankle joint back in place as best as possible. Now this depends on if the vessels are injured or damaged and kind of what joint it is, but you could actually see here when Dak first noticed something was wrong, he actually like took his leg and kind of tried to knock it back in place himself. And 
I don't think he was successful because of course, as he kind of rolled over here, you could see how bad this was. But what the medical team is doing when they get out there is trying to get that joint back in place. If you have fractures there, you wanna stabilize that joint as best as possible to protect the fractures and prevent the injury from getting worse. If we fast forward this all the way to the very end when Dak is leaving, we can see he's got this protective cast and boot on his ankle telling me that, you know, hopefully they were able to get it reduced back in place here, but essentially have put on some protective stabilizing brace here to protect the joint in route to the hospital before surgery. What I've done next here on this foot model is basically shown the nerves and blood vessels that we have around the foot and the ankle. And as you can see, there's a heck of a lot of them. Imagine anytime this joint is dislocated, it can put tearing, it can put pressure, it can damage these nerves, these blood vessels that are supplying the structures and tissues in the foot. There are some joints, some circumstances where you might not on the field try to reduce something and put it back in place and instead would defer that to when they get to the emergency department. But a lot of times you're trying to get that joint reduced, meaning back in proper alignment, back in position to try to restore blood flow, kind of relieve any damage on these potential neurovascular structures. Dak is definitely not the first athlete to have gone through this. Of course, this is very similar to what we saw happen with Gordon Hayward. We saw something similar like this with Alan Hearns, the Cowboys wide receiver a number of years ago. Karis Levert dislocated his ankle and I don't think even had a fracture with it, but still, We've seen this happen in professional athletes. Of course, it's a very serious injury, but assuming there's no major blood vessel damage, there's no nerve damage, this is something that guys can recover from and come back and play. It's just, of course, gonna be a very long, very difficult process, and so you really feel for somebody like Dak here. The other key thing I wanna bring attention to, you know, I know Dak has been very vocal about his mental health struggles, and I'm sure the team is gonna be extra diligent with him as he goes through this difficult recovery because we have to recognize the mental health of our athletes when they've had something so serious like this happen. That's part of the rehab process, just as much as you need to rehab the bones, the muscles, and the tissues, you've got to rehab that kind of mental psychology piece of this to get through the struggle and kind of deal with those different emotions to ultimately get back to play the same way you wait for the bones and the tissues to heal. So that's it for the video, everybody. My heart goes out to Dak. I really wish him the best in the recovery process. You never want to see something like this happen to an athlete, and it's really just devastating when it does. But I hope you're able to learn something from this. As always, let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.